What the fastest way you've seen someone ruin their life? I had a friend in college who had a tendency to act before thinking, but was generally fun and well-meaning. After I had graduated, my friend apparently got coerced by a woman he was trying to sleep with to try heroin just once. As I heard it, he refused initially, then caved because he felt pressured. My friend overdosed and died. Just like that, one bad decision ended his life. RIP Mike, I recently found a good friend of mine passed away in my spare bedroom when he came to visit from New Zealand. He had scored some drugs off the street and was doing needles. I was in such shock when he just pulled out the needle and proceeded to do drugs all day. Later in the evening I was sitting on my couch and he said he was cold so I turned on the heater and closed the door as he was laying in bed. I woke up early the next morning to check on him and he was gone. This whole year has been one hell of a ride. A former acquaintance was playing around with a homemade crossbow that I'd helped him with. I was massively into archery and fletching, and he seemed serious about it. I typically made him leave it with me because deadly weapon. I have an explanation. He kinda didn't. Anyway, to convince his parents to let him join an archery club he wanted to show off the crossbow we made. I thought it was a decent plan so let him take it asterisk without any ammo asterisk. Turns out he was gaming me to get more playtime with his favorite toy. Had gotten hold of some bolts. And was fucking around shooting his shed a fair bit. He somehow ended up firing a bolt that missed the shed completely. Passed between the slats on his fence. And hit his neighbor's daughter in the spine. She hasn't walked since. He got fucked up real bad by her unstable older brother. They both did jail time. Acquaintance was disowned and ended up homeless. And now I'm not sure where they are in life. Holy shit. I think the worst part of this is that you took all precautions to prevent any kind of accidents happening but he somehow managed to create one anyways. My friend was drunk as shit so I took his keys and hid them in the house so he couldn't leave. I left and the next day found out he broke into his car and got the spare key out of the glove compartment after we left. He made it 15 miles and was basically in his driveway when he went off the road and hit a tree. Went to school with a kid who threw a rock off an overpass and killed a dude. Whole life down the drain at that point. Made international news. Edit. Flint. Michigan. Imagine being the dude that got hit. Just living your life driving home from work one second literally dead the next. This life is something else. My friend is a teacher. She teaches the kids who dad was killed and said she just watched the poor kid deteriorate after. The dad died. Super sad and really an effed up situation. In the Air Force, this new guy joins and goes out to a bar then decides to drive home. Gets a DUI. Loses all his rank. Has to pay a ton in fines but leadership fought for him and he was allowed to stay in the Air Force. Two months later as he's paying tons of lawyer and legal fees. He does something really stupid. Drives home from the same bar drunk and gets arrested. Loses his license and gets kicked out of the military. So loses all his income while he's thousands of dollars in debt. That's not even the worst part. A few months later, he celebrates being a civilian again by, you guessed it, going to the same bar, then driving home drunk arrested and put in jail for a while. I can't imagine he has many future career opportunities with a less than honorable discharge and an arrest record. Edit. I should have added that the third DUI included charges for driving without a license since he had it suspended after the second. Three duis in my state puts you on wanted list and gets you prison. Unfortunate. Also you figure the bar is calling the cops at that point. Early 90s, my friend was a sweet theater nerd who went to the same college as me. She started hanging out with a sketchy crowd and ignoring her old friends. Especially when we tried to tell her she was losing herself. She ended up moving to Seattle to hang with her new friends. Growing up, she was the most sober person in our group. She never even drank alcohol, much less did any drugs. 
But six months later, she was dead of a heroin overdose. One of my best childhood friends also died this way, but a bit more slowly. We hung out nearly every weekend from second grade until ninth. In ninth grade, he really started to struggle with his image, identity. He had always been the class clown, but never really one of the cool kids. One day he showed up decked out in skater gear from Paxson and became friends with some junkies. He started using heroin and I stopped hanging out with Hi Monsieur a couple years later we reconnected. He had convinced everybody that he had beaten the addiction and was moving on with his life. During our college years, I went to a university about 45 minutes away and he started taking classes at a local community college. We would hang out on weekends sometimes whenever I was in town. Seven years later he was still going to the community college and was perpetually one or two classes away from finally graduating. I ended up joining the Navy. A few years later I got a call that he had died in his sleep after a blood vessel burst in his brain. Apparently long-term heroin use sometimes results in such problems doctors discovered he had been using, even though he could never get his ship together. He was actually a remarkably smart and genuinely interesting person. I never bothered him about his lack of ambition because I figured he was off of drugs and that was good enough. Now I'm pretty much middle-aged and I still miss Hi Monsieur. Dropped out of a very good college with a full scholarship that his family could never have afforded otherwise. After three years due to World of Warcraft addiction. No, this wasn't me. I managed my addiction responsibly. I knew someone that happened too. It was crazy. He was so smart and normal beforehand. My boss has a saying. You're only one more drink and one stupid comment away from losing your career. That being said, I watched a former co-worker pull a beanie toward the crown of his head and say. Check it out. I look like Brian's cock. Single quote. Brian was his uncircumcised subordinate. Sitting right across from High Monsieur my former co-worker was out of a job within a month. Divorced within six. And living on the streets within three years. Jesus Christ where did those last two steps come from? It was a really bad joke. My boss was got caught by a bicycle cop in a shady alley waiting for a friend whose name he didn't. No, he was just picking her up for dinner at Arby's with a crack pipe in his console. He was making probably 200k a year. He was a public employee and the news exploded on local news. He was fired and divorced in a matter of days. Greater than waiting for a friend whose name he didn't know. He was just picking her up for dinner at Arby's with a crack pipe in his console took me too long to realize that was definitely not what he was doing. No dope did the same. Didn't realize it till I read this. I knew this guy in my 20s. He was kind of new to our little group. He brought this girl around. She was trying to fuck everybody. I didn't know him that well. But I tried to tell him about her. He didn't believe me and took her side. We stopped talking when she was trying to fuck me one night. She told me he had a premature ejaculation problem and he was really lame in bed. She specified she really needed some good dick because he seriously only lasts like a minute. I wasn't interested in her and politely declined. Anyway, I didn't actually see it. But a few months later, I heard he got her pregnant. The fastest I know of someone ruining their life was about a minute. Hey, there's a good chance it was someone else who got her pregnant. Abusing Xanax and alcohol fucked my life up pretty good pretty quickly. Crashed my car. Got dumped by my girlfriend. Failed all my college classes. And made a bunch of people hate me all in the span of like two months. Haven't touched Xanax in years and managed to somewhat pull my life back together. I'm glad for you. Keep at it. I had an acquaintance who was pretty successful. Early 30s. Good job. Homeowner etc. His next-door neighbors had custody of their niece, a 16-year-old cheerleader who was home alone all the time. They struck up a friendship. Need I say more? Actually, yes. 
The cops stop him randomly with her in the passenger seat. They ID her since she looks young. Call her guardians. Who deny that he has permission to take her anywhere? Here's the thing. They had crossed a county line. Boom. Kidnapping charge. They break him in interrogation and he admits to sex. Boom. Statutory rape charges. They convince him to unlock his phone and find her nudes in his inbox. Boom. Child pornography charges. Boom goes the cell door. Really sounds like he deserved all that though. Can't feel bad for him. She took MLM seriously, invested into it. Lost friends, everyone and money. Simple. And this is why you never accept a meeting from anyone to discuss a vague business opportunity. It helps to be insane. I say that as someone who is certifiably bonkers. I worked with an engineer at a manufacturing facility at one point in my career. We'll call him Bob Dobbs. We had defense-related contracts with major players like Boeing. It was not this man's job to design anything, but to do manufacturing shit. At some point, within a year of my arriving, he began answering the phone with customers as Bob Dobbs, engineering manager, and insisting that all communication go through Hi Monsieur. He got away with this for nearly three months until someone called the actual engineering manager, asking for Bob Dobbs, the engineering manager, due in no small part to the what the fuckery involved. A review of Bob Dobbs' work began. He had been redesigning, optimizing, customer designs before they went to production. There was almost one dollar mill of scrap sitting on the shop floor. He was terminated, and began a career delivering pizza. Greater than began a career tilde tilde delivering tilde tilde as asterisk asterisk Bob Dobbs pizza engineering manager asterisk asterisk. I was a licensed firearms owner in Canada and I sold a handful of handguns to my crack dealer when I was still smoking a few years back. And it caught up to me three years after I got sober. I'm going to court for sentencing in a couple of months, with the prosecutor seeking six to eight years. And although it may not seem like that much in the grand scheme of things, but since I quit smoking crack, I got my driver's license, started my own construction business, and I'm in a four-year relationship with an amazing woman who was the reason for my getting sober. All of that is going to be gone. And my grandpa who is the only family who raised me I have left, will most likely be gone because of him being 84. I'm not sure where you would count a life being ruined. The second I made the decision to sell the firearms. The second the RCMP and local police pulled me over with 20 cars in morning rush hour. My name being put in the newspaper with my crime. Or when I get sentenced in a few months. I've decided it was the second I made the decision. This made me really sad. I am glad you got clean. I hope this works out for you and I wish you well. I just watched an 18 year old kid nearly kill his 5 14 to 17 year old friends going 70 plus mph running from a cop for lighting shit on fire during heavy burn suspensions. The kid had the audacity to say, I'm a minor. Any charges won't stick. That cop hit him with one felony of reckless endangerment for each kitty, for a DUI, and several other charges. Given that the two 14-year-olds both stopped breathing on the way to the hospital. Oh yeah? Those charges are going to stick from boozy Friday night party to life-changing mistaken guilt and almost murdering your friends in a matter of minutes. For those interested, all the kids are healing well. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day.